Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tino the Last News of Europe in which we're playing as the United States of Serbia. But before we get to a couple comments, let's go ahead and do to the victor. The Russian Far East has been blood dry and our campaign to reacquire the valuables left behind by our now defunct enemies has finally come to pass. We now have a vast trove of treasures and artifacts under our protection and that means it's time to reinvest our newfound capital into turning this region into something we can actually work with. We can either use our loot to encourage development of infrastructure and industry of Siberia and put together something resembling a proper war machine, or we used to encourage some generous investments from our friends across the Bering Strait. Both would be of great benefit to West Alaska, but we cannot have our cake and eat it too, which shall it be. So, basically what we're, what we're talking about is either an open door policy or the wealth of Siberia. Now, actually there's quite a few comments we need to get through, especially with the support I asked you guys regarding this, these two focuses, but more importantly about how we are going to govern <clears throat> our little Russian enclave. So, overall, there's more support for us to currently go ahead and do... Time to open our doors to the states. An open door policy. Out of all the potential foreign partners, we could have none are more aligned with our interests than the, the United States. President Werbel, himself an American national, has a great deal of connections within the OFN, and thus it is only fair that we grant favored partner status to our friends in the West when opening trade. The good old US of A will not find a more willing trade partner than us. From Irkutsk to Magadan, American companies will be well welcomed to explore opportunities in new markets, and in the process, both of our economies will benefit. Wow. Oh, and it looks like we're really not going towards the locals, which is, you know, whatever. Oh, look at that. We're headed down south, it looks like a little bit more. Cool. And yeah, let's see, we can purchase some American guns. American support is kind of low for now. But we can also get some more of this stuff later on, too. Let's see. Also, I didn't realize, you guys, several of you guys mentioned that I didn't, that helicopters are down here. So we need to get this stuff, t too. We need to improve scout helis. So we can actually get some scout helicopter companies and transport helicopters, stuff like that, too. So, improve transport helis. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it's also probably down here, too. Yep, there it is. Assault, air assault, that's my fault. I thought we c we couldn't use them. But, you know what? We're still going to go get them. I'm still going to try to get them. It's only 66. 1966, I should probably say. We're going to try to get that as fast as possible. We have an open door policy my oh, my now, my friends. Most dependable partner. Export focus with free trade? Hmm, we might. Now, I did ask you about support for this stuff. And there is support for either under the table, under the table or over the table. We'll probably go over the table because that's what you guys recommended. But, more importantly, we got to talk about this. So, we can either rule like a... Kaiser, no, Caesar, not Kaiser, that's not Old World Blues, or, you know, New Vegas, so, or we do govern like a Cincinnati, and overall, there's overwhelming support for us to choose Cincinnati's route, so, here we go, as president, many of the local civilians have accused Werbel of dictatorial tendencies, painting him as a Caesar who does not have the best interests of the people in mind, it is hogwash, Werbel is a descendant of the white, of a white Russian officer who fought in the Russian Civil War. He has much in common with the populace and is only here to bring order to his ravaged homeland. Would it not elate and uplift the heart of a patriot to see his home country soar again among the powers of the world? That is Werbel's purpose. Though many can may condemn his rule as tyrannical, he is not here to dictate. He is here to rule. Whether they like it or not, the Russians of West Alaska are his subjects, and he looks after them, perhaps in the distant future. Werbel might step down and allow a worthy Russian to take his place as president of the Republic. So we get we lose ideology to defense, we get more stability, and we actually lose political power. Because we're going to, we're going to go with controlled opposition, and we get more population, and a little bit more stability. Not a lot more, but a little bit more. So we can improve American relations. I kind of want to do that. But at the same time, I want to do one of these first, agriculture, yeah, I'm going to do that one first, and then we're going to go and improve American relations, and I have a sip of our good old coffee here. Still need more artillery, hmm. Scout helicopters, not looking too bad, not great, but not too bad. We do want to use these guys, 40 combat widths, actually. One of you guys is a specialty unit, and we're currently only using 20 combat width. But you know what, I'm going to convert one already. Just convert one. We can't really afford the artillery cost, but... Oh well. Whatever. Wow. Yeah, that's actually not doing too bad. At the end of last episode, we were at 400 million for an annual deficit. Now it's 333.68. Not bad. Not bad. We're building very nicely. So we're going to govern like a Cincinnati. Follow it up with what? Integrating the NKVD. Police with... Replace police with security service. And reduces the administrative... Strain on the budget, which I really, really like. We get more political power there, but this is going to be better. Just and we can't do make your use of black shirts because, well, ooh, actually, hold on, can we actually do that? Oh, well, 
Hmm. I'm gonna go liberalism, illiberalism by nece necessity. Although it is unfortunate, we must be admit we must be admitted that the situation in Russia, Russia does not permit the political freedoms that Americans enjoy. Although Warble's heart bleeds for Russians, his cause to triumph, he must rally Russians from all political classes behind him. He can now allow no dissent, no cap in his resolve to save Russia from the destitution with which he's, she now finds herself. It's a pragmatic solution. When Warble's term as dictator expires, the Republic shall use its utmost efforts towards the expansion of this freedom. However, for now, a certain amount of political curtailment is necessary. Warble state agencies shall scan through newspapers, radio broadcasts, and media that the Russian people will consume to find any sign of displeasure and rebellion. Only through control and restraint can we find peace in our way into Russia again. Very good. We'll do that one, and we're going to go straight for air, airline strikes, and then we'll get the research for that. Scout helicopter. Good. Supply depots, not bad. It'll be removed in, in a little bit more than a year, though, which is fine, whatever. We have the American economy. There's our stability. And we have mercenary looters. Oh, that's really nice. Actually, that's not really nice for stability, but whatever. I like the consumer goods. Keep pumping them up. Pump, 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 pump. Mm. Very good. So, yeah, we got to research the helicopter troops and the support and underneath the infantry where the special forces are actually located at. Let's see. <clears throat> well, we got 10 days left. Actually, for this... Can we get any more stability yet? I could really... We could really use some stability. Ooh, yeah. I'd say we're going to get the other one first. We're going to grab more stability because I don't want to hurt us too much yet. Research, we got quite a few days. Oh, make use of black shirts? Or integrating the NKVD? I mean, basically it's the same thing in the end. Authoritarian socialism, national socialism. I mean, both are not very good for us, but bears of bad news. Dimitri swore under his breath as he stared out of the window of his humble little newspaper office. A police car just parked across the street, and the man in front of the seat was repeatedly glancing at his storefront in between snippets of conversation with his partner. Even his top writers clacked and brasses did their work behind him. He stood silent as he watched their every action, after what felt like ages. The cops finished their talking and filed out of the car. Dimitri's heart fell into his stomach as he watched them begin walking toward his door. The bell jingled as the police officers entered the building. Dimitri put on a fake smile and turned to them what seemed to be the problem, officers. Did you publish this? Spoke the man in front, holding out a newspaper with an all-too-familiar headline. Thousands of troops without pension due to frighteningly incompetent new policy, but what was more gosh darning was a line right above it, the Magadan Eye, Dimitri's newspaper. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, but shut it down by order of President Werbel Esquire. But I uh, do you want me to force you? Because that can be arranged. Dimitri sighed. No. <clears throat> Good. You have 24 hours to close this whole operation, or me and my partner will make another visit. As the officers left the building, Dimitri sighed and began walking into the back room where his staff worked, ready to deliver the bad news. The truth has been silenced. So, we get 1% more proportional GDP cost. Everything is pretty much the same exactly. Yeah. Oh, it just... Do we want Gurgen Aserians and Genrik Lyshuskov as ministers? <clears throat> or do we want... Vivitsky, uh, Sky, Vivitsky, and Shikharev. Well, obviously, as Warble, we don't really care for national socialists or communists, authoritarian socialists, what we shall say. <clears throat> Excuse me for including my voice all the time in this episode. At the very beginning, I apologize for that. But, okay, so here's the deal. We had to fight communists. And technically, we had to fight fascists as well. But fascists and national socialists are more easily controlled in my mind because that's how we got or cooed Metkovsky. So we already don't like communists, so we can probably, I'm not going to say bully, but we can more easily control ooh, GDP growth uh, these people. So the fascist party, whose leadership was comprised of Russian emigres from Harbin and elsewhere in Manchuria, was the first enemy that Warble faced in Russia, although the fate of Metkovsky remains unknown as of yet, and his and Radzewski's party he left without a guiding hand. Languishing in prisons throughout the Far East, these brutal thugs and party functionaries await only a leader to call them into action. To restore order, the Republic might need help, their help after all. The other choice would be the NKVD, and that decision is another can of worms on its own. If the President decides to use the black shirts instead of the NKVD, he'll give them a unilateral pardon and a stern warning. While he wages war to restore Russia as one again, these men would have the duty of keeping order in domestic affairs. Although fascism is contrary to the ideals of the Republic, one must occasionally use or choose the lesser evil. So now we can either do... We need executive orders. So we can't do it with us or against us, which is fine. And to do this one, we need... We, we could do this one. Low pensions, huh? Or a velvet... Gloved iron fist. We get low minimum wage, which we do get more authoritarian democracy. This one we do not get any more, but isn't lower it. So, um, hmm. 
I kind of like this one. I don't like the, the GDP cost increase. I really don't like that. So, just saying. <laughs> Let's improve relations too with Americans. 33, 33, 33. 265, not bad, not bad. And we're done with that one too. Copy's pretty good as well. And what are we going to do? Possible American guns. Cool. I want to see this one finished first. And then I want to go ahead and get some more civilian factories as well. There we go. Very nice. Let's see. Cool. Next one. Make use of black shirts. I really want to do this one because it doesn't hurt us, hurt us there, but requires one of the following. Okay. Let's see. Hmm. Do we get more authoritarian democracy there? No. Yeah, we don't get any more authoritarian democracy. Ooh, make we make all we all make sacrifices. Okay. Uh, let's see. Assign stuff. Hmm. I want to reduce the administrative strain as fast as possible. We get more political power there. You know what? The carrot and the stick. You know what? Uh, if I chose these guys last time, or if I ever play Werble again, and specifically this route, I'll probably go with a velvet gloved iron fist. Uh -huh. You know, I'll, I'll do the carrot and stick. Why not? It's only two percent more, right? In a region with so many ethnic and cultural variations, as far as the far east, the flexibility is key. Werble's previous decisions have rendered this path open to him. The carrot or the stick. The far eastern people are free to choose or follow our directives or disobey them. If they for choose the former, we shall reward them and promote them as their deeds have seen them fit. If they choose the latter, then they shall be liable to punishment within the criminal code. Above all, the government shall attempt to distance itself from the civilian population. Using the previously appointed police forces, we shall enact punishment. The, the public's republics, civilian bodies, shall reward those that perform their duties with exceptional skill. Never say that Werbel is an ungrateful man. He rewards those who deserve it and punishes those who have been fallen. You know, that kind of fits in line a little bit with, you know, Cincinnatus. Like, yeah, we need dictatorial powers, and this could make some sense as well, but we have the care and say, we want to guide people towards the right way, and we, if we have to use executive force, and so be it, but begrudging teamwork. Yuri Vitvitsky was startled awake by the slamming of a door, tumbling off of the stiff, filthy cot he'd been sleeping on, landing face first on the cold hard ground. Ah! Oh, he grunted, sitting up and rubbing his quickly blackened eye. He'd been seeing worse wounds from his days with Matkovsky's black shirts, but it still hurt like heck. Glancing up, he saw a man what seemed to be an officer of some sort approaching his cell. Yuri staggered to his feet, expecting to be called to attention only for the man to approach the next cell over. A hushed conversation perceived between the stranger and Yuri's neighbor, for the jingling of keys could be heard, followed by the metallic whine of a cell door grinding open. Good to be back, exclaimed a voice, which was becoming louder as its origin exited this, his cell. The, the uniform's officer led Yuri's prison mate into view as he finally approached his cell, none other than Georgi Shikharev, leader of the Amur Blackshirts. Yuri certainly held mixed feelings towards the revelation. Yuri, Amur had been his sworn enemy for as long as time, but they both shared a prison under Werbel's Republic. Prisoner Yuri Vivitsky, said the officer, as if reading from the script, the U.S. of Siberia has an offer to extend to you. Yuri raised an eyebrow, and just what is that offer? A full pardon for you and several other black shirts in exchange for your service to the states as a peacekeeper. Christ, anything that'll get me out of this cell is fine by me. Very well, replied the officer, plucking another key from the chain on his belt and pressing it into his lock onto his key door, sliding it with the same distinct grind. At last, Yuri left his tiny little cell behind. Can't wait to sleep in a real bed. Ah, uh, welcome. Just don't betray us. Uh, 385, that sucks. But fresh air at last. Nagasaki Accords. Very good for you guys, I guess. 62% stability. Could be better. Could be worse. A little bit of lag. Here we go. And boom. Okay, I want to see the decisions, not the money. And honestly, I'm not even paying attention to this too much, so. We can buy some guns. Yeah. Waning American. Oh, it went down to back down to low. That's fine. Mercenary looters. Oh, that kind of hurt us. Actually, we're still making. Uh, this is still pretty good. That's still pretty good. And how is our society? Well, things are going up. 3, 134, 49, negative 3, but it's going up anyway. 66, 116, not bad. Widespread cronyism is getting better. It's getting better. Now, we could, we could keep doing this, and we are going to keep doing this because I want more political power. I'm going to cut that just because I think it's better. I mean, yeah, it's hurts our production for stuff, but whatever. Get the stick. I'm going to do a functional legislature because I want to reduce the administrative strain as fast as possible. In our attempts, our previous attempts at establishing a semblance of control over the Far East and our territories, we've encountered the bureaucracy of this place. Business team made out of patchwork legal territories that could be scarcely be called a nation. Although the situation has settled down, there remains a significant discrepancy of men, especially in regards to fascist and communist standards. The fascist and communist bureaucracy often do not agree on much. One uses the imperial system, the other uses metric, for example. As a solution to this, the Republic shall promulgate new laws that standardize the differences endemic to the bureaucracy. 
bureaucratic system. From this patchwork of standards, we shall fashion the fabric of new bureaucracy, a smooth and gliding citizen service that serves, that serves its people very, very well. Look at that political power. Wow. What do we have here? The two faces of West Alaska, of course, that we will read. We can appoint a lot of people, but I'm really more interested in this stuff here. Uh, it moderately increases GDP. We lose some civilian factors. We get 300 million to the national debt. We get more infrastructure, which is not bad. But I'm only going to take that stuff once this other stuff has been dealt with. Poverty, yes. Academic base, weekly manpower is not bad. We're doing pretty well at this point. I don't see too many problems with that stuff. Academic base is better than research, in my opinion. And then we'll do some research. And then we'll do some other stuff. So, the two faces of West Alaska. Arsini sucked air and threw his teeth as he yanked his hand away from the blast furnace. Through the boiling heat inside the steel mill and the clatter of hammers and other instruments of work, he had not been wearing one of his protective gloves. Now, the skin on his palm not protected was red, blotchy and swollen, not to mention throbbing with pain. Staggering back away from the furnace and nearly tripping over the man behind him, he caught the eye of one of the supervisors that had been assigned to the mill days ago. Wincing through the pain, he watched the supervisor quickly approach him and roughly address him. What the heck are you doing, sir? I, I don't want to hear it. We can't have reckless dudes in here hurting themselves by touching a hard furnace. Sir, my glove was. Your glove was what? Are you accusing our company of not providing adequate equipment? No, sir. Good. Go to go get, go get to a clinic and don't expect any pay for the hours you'll be gone. With the conversation over, and Arseny shuffling out of the building with a supervisor approaching another man who had been informed of what was doing exceptional work. For a few moments, he watched him effortlessly working away to, at a white hot ingot, waiting for the man to take a break. The worker turned around to face the supervisor, his face twisting into a worried grimace. Did I do something wrong? No, no, no. How would you like a raise in the next few hours of your salary? The stick isn't always the most discerning tool. Oh, boy. All right. 655. Oh, that, oh, that cost. Oh, that hurt. Oh, that hurt. I thought this was America. I was supposed to have an ever-increasing GDP and... I guess, technically, it is quite American to have a lot of debt. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me about it. Anyways, uh, let's, I'm going to grab this immediately, just so we can have it. Air assault divisions, yes, please. We've got to get those. Oh, we actually made the division. Nice. I did make these guys 40 combat with over here. We're training them instead of these divisions up here, so. And we have Nacional Noia Opolshenia. Opolshenia. They're the military police. We don't need this anymore. We might use these. Probably not. We'll see what happens. And how many artillery pieces are we lacking? Actually, only 231. That's not bad. Not bad. It is 66. I mean, we could be doing more artillery stuff, more gun stuff, but I think industry is pretty important. This is just better to do. You get more max factories in the state, which we got to get, so. Totally, totally fine with me. A functional state, send regional commanders, yes please. We have for the moment at least secured West Alaska, but we must now administer it. If we are to ensure that it remains stable and above all else productive, to do so we will divide the state into regions and appoint a commander to each one. These commanders will be chosen from the ranks of our best and most loyal men. In this way we will be sure of their commitments to the goals of the state, rather than any of their own, in which we must be clearing house. Can we improve American relations? Yes we can. Ooh, yeah, like I said, I want that one, but I'll, more... We gotta go army professionalism. There's no, no 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 choice. That's okay. Weekly manpower is okay. A little bit more construction speed. Fifty percent is not bad. But next one is improve American relations. Probably, probably. Fifty-two percent authoritarian democracy. So, as some of the comments said in the past episode, in the past few episodes, really, if you look up Mitchell uh, Warble III, he is the actual son of a white Russian cavalry officer who was born in Philadelphia. He's actually really interesting. It was a, and you guys said Gordon Ingram was actually the guy who helped develop, was it the MAC-10, I think? So, look him up, seriously, look him up, he's really interesting. Now, he, there's some, uh, maybe maybe not conspiracy, but what happened, like, Orbel was poisoned in the end, I believe? Or at least that was the rumor, or maybe that actually did happen. Because the lawyer was like, we say that this is a, um, a big old fantasy. Well, we'll see, maybe. Uh, legal Path of Collaboration. Greatly increases mercenary influence. Poverty rate will begin to increase. So, but cleaning, cleaning house. Lada stared out of the window of her apartment in downtown Yakutsk, relatively close to the Yakutsk administrative offices. They were in there, in fact, in view of, from her window where she'd been watching the sun slowly make its way beneath the skyline, bathing the streets in, in okra that was slowly fading to purple would transition from there to midnight blue. A black card followed by a motorcade of military trucks rolled through the streets, pulling right up beside the administrative offices. Intrigued, Lada leaned further out of her window, gripping the, still, the sill and trying to discern who was climbing out of the car. No, no one she knew, that's for certain, nor anyone she'd ever seen on a ballot appointed by the Soviet. No, but some variety of high-ranking military men. She could never get down to the specifics of uniforms in the newly forged USS. 
but the man certainly had the entourage to prove his rank. She watched the little ant-sized man enter the building above along with a few soldiers. After a few minutes, more figures exited the building. Only it wasn't the soldiers, it was the administrative staff of the building. Lada stared at the window with deep concern as most of Yakut's government was ordered out of the building, presumably to be replaced with a man in the fancy cap and whatever staff he chose to keep. Worriedly, she stepped away from the window and went to go turn on one of her lamps, the night being quite dark by now. Returning to a window, she closed the curtains and went on to go sit down and pondered the ch changing times. A Yunto right in her backyard. Most dependable partner. I kind of like that. I kind of want more. Oh, expertise is good. Oh, that's rapid too. Oh my goodness. Um, we'll come back and do this in a little bit. Decrease mercenary influence. <sighs> but get better poverty rate. The mercenary state. It just makes sense to go the path towards collaboration with the way we've gone. As much as I want... As like I would like to do rule like a Caesar. Hmm. Ruling like a Caesar, we'll do a mercenary state when we go back and play as Orville someday. By dawn's early light. But I do want to get this one. It's rapidly improved. I do want to get some more GDP growth. Oh man, there's so much I want to do. So we're gonna wait for this. You know what? I want that GDP growth. Connecting art outposts. Russia is a big place in the Far East Long Dirt Roads. It's easy for a truck to go missing. Unforgiving nature, bandits, hungry refugees, the remnants of our dedicated or defeated foes, and even common malfunctions usually means the shipment is lost in these parts. We can't afford to lose a cargo to weapons to uh, out troops or to put out for our troops or worse delivery dollars. For that reason, we should improve our infrastructure to ensure a proper grip in the rain in the region and establish an appropriate communications grid linking our many scattered positions. Yes, please. Anything else here? Nope. Yeah, very nice. We can only get 1.03 every day. That's not too bad, actually. That's not too bad. Airland strikes. So, we're going to get this. I mean, there's no point doing this, really, if we don't have the planes themselves. So, once we're done with that, we could do military construction stuff. This stuff is not, not too bad at all. We could do resources eventually. We have only three research slots, obviously. So, we're going to get that. We could do that. Mm, I think we're going to go on for this one. I like the scout helicopters, probably. Attack helicopters are okay. Transports. Actually, specifically, what do we need for the research stuff here? Almost two, two billion in debt. Oh, that hurts me as an American. Air assault. Oh, we technically, maybe it's just that one, huh? I love the air assault. If that's a case, well, we might as well just finish up the land auction so we don't have to worry about it later. Oh, wait. Oh, my bad. Wrong one. This one. There we go. Vertical envelopment. Purchase American guns. I mean, we're good on guns. I need artillery, though. We need artillery. From a backwater to a hub. We have enormous advantage of controlling Russia's last free port, yet we are still only receiving a trickle of wealth and investment from the outside world rather than the flood that should be pouring in. This is because Magadon, battle center of Siberian trade that it is, is little more than a hamlet on the world scale. If we want to draw further investment and business from around the globe, we need to a port worthy of our nation's or world's attention. Magadan will become such a port, but it'll take investment. Soon, Magadan will be the gateway to Russia. The new Vladivostok. Shipments from the USA, Canada, South America, and Australia will find their way to the Russian shores to do business with us. Turning a former whaling port into a new center of global trade will not be a cheap or easy, but we'll have never let that stop us before. We get a little bit more cost, whatever, we get dockyards, naval bases, and industrial equipment will begin to improve even more. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Did they do... Who went to... Did Germany go to... War? I've never seen Germany go to war with these guys. Hold on. This is the first time I've ever seen this. These guys actually joined... The Rex Commissary must convene still exists, and they... Oh! Wow! That's kind of exciting, not gonna lie. Kind of exciting. Oh, that's getting higher and higher. I don't like that. But, oh my goodness, this is... Rex Protectorat! Not Rex Commissary, Protectorat. Oberlander. Whoa, this is... And Samara and Comey are just murdering each other. Wow, I like that, but holy cow. A brand new market... The FMF investments have paid off. Every day, more ships come into Magadan's harbor, bearing goods from the outside world, and ushering in a new age of Siberian prosperity. Even as we continue to expand our port's capability or capacity, more and more nations around the globe turn their eyes towards us as they see a new opportunity for trade and fortune. Magadan is finally becoming what we've always knew it could be, a central hub of Pacific trade. We cannot rest our, on our laurels and content ourselves with what we have accomplished so far. We are trading with members of the free world around the Pacific, but we can extend our reach further if we try. The ports of Europe and Africa beckon to us. From Stockholm to Cape Town, there are more potential partners waiting to see what Siberia can offer them. We must show them. More daily political power... Better trade deal opinion factors. Our GDP growth will increase from humble origins. Yes, please. Can we improve relations? No. Yeah, just... There's so much here in terms of appointing other people. Alexander Pavlov, Yuri Vivitsky, Shikarev. Oh, budget stuff? Increase. Just 
Actually, that's looking better. 600. It was just 700 and a half million. That's looking a little better now. Nice. Very nice. Guns are nice and all. Mm. Construction speed could be pretty good. But if we're going to do anything, I'm going to get this one first just because I want as much infrastructure done as fast as possible. So this way we get more max factories in the state. We can just build, 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 build. Improve relations with the Americans. That's always good. Wow, Rock's coming to start. Muscovy is not looking too bad. Moscow is on the front lines. Oh. Muscovy is... I've never seen Muscovy come back. And there goes Samar. They've won. The Volgastadt. Samara unifies West Russia. A uh, trucks? Do we need motorized? No, we got 1,500 in reserve, so we really don't need that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's all I can say. Just wow. I've never seen them go to war under Borman. Maybe that's different, but whatever. Because of the following. Uh, let's see. Alright, so maybe we should eventually do some of this stuff as well. But I'm going to go here first just because I want to get that one. So, invite American companies. Of course, getting the American companies to apply balls is as simple as opening the door and inviting them in. We need to reconfigure the laws to foster more business-friendly government. Therefore, taxes on big business will be reduced, and certain Soviet-era regulations hampering the ability of large corporations to do business will be done away with. While there's bound to be a lot of grumbling from commie sympathizers that still hold away in the country, the benefits of these changes are worth any price. American companies will finally have car carte blanche to do business on our shores however they please, so as long as we get our cut. Nice. From humble origins... <laughs> Only decades ago, the ports of Magadan was a mere humbling whaling port founded at the height of the power of the USSR to help in developing the region as Vladivostok is concentrated on handling larger ships. However, Vladivostok is a Russian city no more. After years of seemingly relentless work on improving its capabilities, it's finally emerged as a significant port alongside the, along the Pacific. Drawing a trade from Shanghai to San Francisco as entrepreneurs and investors seek to extract the untapped resources of Russia in general and the Far East in particular through the safest and warmest large large port remaining under control of the Russians themselves, and not only Ger German or Japanese occupiers, and now serves to enrich not only those who control it and those who do business in it, but even those ordinary people who live in and around it. Most importantly, it has led to a greater role for the U.S. Of, of Siberia on the world stage, giving it real power and influence in its own right dealings with friend and foe alike. Fortune favors the bold. Soldiers of fortune, we salute thee. Whoa. <clears throat> The Kazakh, Kazakhane, eh? Oh, Caucasian and... Uh... Hello, Mr. Khan. So you guys are fighting Caucasian and they're all fighting... Oh, who are you? Plager? Plager? Huh, never seen that guy before. There we go. Invest in heavy machinery? You betcha. You betcha old big old booties we gonna do that. Ooh, wait. Go Gottenland? Is this Thousand Week Reich? What the heck? I've never seen him before either. Um, aren't you supposed to be led by Hadrush? <laughs> well, a thousand week right they are. Horizontal industrial organization too. Yes, please. Oh, nice. We have two. Oh, that's so good. As much as I want to improve Magadan, we're going to need um, this one first before the infrastructure. Just build. Build the bonanzas out of us. 539 billion. Not bad. Actually, research is not bad. It's going to do impact American companies. Contracts and connections. <clears throat> Our efforts to get our business partners in the OFM to play ball have paid off, and they have finally decided to set up shop in West Alaska. Now, however, we need to make up or make sure that they stay. It would be quite unfortunate for them to turn our back after so much was spent trying to get them here in the first place. Luckily, our president has no shortage of connections. He will personally work with these companies and encourage them to work with each other to improve their efficiency. Into the process, lock them into contracts that will legally bind them to doing business in our nation. That's way it won't be. It won't matter if they get second thoughts about working with us. Very good. In a new land, Johnny Walton never figured his humble little logging company would go international. Well, you could consider Canada international, but it was a good old USA neighbor. Hardly a foreign land, Magadan was more Americanized than he thought it would be. Plenty of billboards for familiar brands out of the city along with plenty of Americans. The scruffy mercenaries that patrol the streets were even from his own country, though they were sw they, they swore our allegiance to a new United States. It didn't matter, though. Johnny had the chance here to expand his business like never before. When your business is trees, you're limited by the mount. Not to mention reforcing after you're done so the trees are there for you next time. Unlike back home, Johnny didn't have to worry about environmental protections, oversight, or much of anything in the way of big government keeping the little guy like him down. Well... Little being, little being figurative, he still inherited the business from his pappy and his before him. But he was still, still a worker. He was still a worker. He was out here making a bad, taking a risk on the new country, the United States of Siberia. He was an ambitious son of a gun, willing to take on these kinds of risks. After he signed on with the dotted line, the USS government was going to give him tens of thousands of land to harvest lumber from. His company had endless growth, and already investors back home were raking over the cash to help feed his enterprise. 
Even more would be lining up to invest after the first year and in the next, and the one after that. Every year! Each year! Ramping up production. And Johnny knew he wasn't the only company coming in. Across, all across the states, people were heeding the call of fresh expansion into this new frontier. It was like the Wild West were born here and now. It seemed like these scenes of visionary enchantment would never have an end. And there goes Africa, but we don't really care. Actually, we kind of do care. Can we get involved? Will you pay us to get involved down there? I kind of want to. Popular Republic of the Congo. Is this a Chinese pop propped up co co country? I see those stars. I'm like, red, red and yellow on a flag? China? I'm not paid by the CCP. Hmm. That's as far as I'll go with that comment. Encourage political thought, eh? <clears throat> England and Wales at war. No one cares. Let's see, that's just another day in England, or in the British Isles. Now, we can get more stability for 14 more political power. You know what? There is a there is a cap on how much stability we can get, and we aren't integrating other places yet, so I'm going to wait to do that. How's this looking right now? 33, 33, 33, 50, 50, 50. Whatever, I can't be bothered with that too much. And there goes Wales. i got to play as Wales sometime, too. I do plan on them playing as them sometime. Not sure what, what Wales is like, but whatever. <clears throat> all right, so let's go and do the most dependable partner. Businessmen and capitalists are all the same the world over. Shifty, slimy dudes looking for the easiest way to quick, make a quick buck without a care in the world for those who they screw over in the process. However, as it stands, we need to encourage business, and that means we'll have to deal with these people. They won't find a better partner than West Alaska. Whatever they ask of us, they'll get us oh, as long as it does not put our government in jeopardy. Their investments will drive our industry forward, and the economy will become an unstoppable machine in the process. Russia might have been once a champion of bleeding heart ideals such as socialism, but President Orwell's Russia will be a different beast entirely. You bet your butts, it will be. All right, a new nightmare. It all been a lie. Rather big, big one, big old lie built on a mountain of smaller lies. Johnny Walton, CEO of the Walton Logging Company, was now a slave. The euphoria of what was promised by the United States of Siberia. He wanted to be the first ahead of all of the competition. Well, he got his wish, and now he was paying for it. At first, he figured he could hire American workers, but his contract stated he needed to use local labor. Next, he wanted to set up several. Uh, several camps at once, but the infrastructure wasn't there for it. Heck, it was hard enough getting gas for all the trucks he needed. Production was almost 10 times slower here than it was back home. The investors had stopped being interested at all. There's only one recourse for Johnny to bail out, and that was the only way he would be able to save his company without it falling apart, except he didn't read the fine print. Mm-mm. It was bound to provide a certain amount of jobs and give a certain amount of revenue and taxes to the United States of Siberia. Then to mention a certain amount of lumber to help with the rebuilding of so many homes destroyed in the unification of the East. That would be done with Walton's lumber. It wasn't simply John either. All the American companies that had come here were trapped for at least a decade, if not more. It had been so simple, the government here knew that American companies would be too eager to expand, too happy to jump the gun like Johnny had. He pulled another draw from a cigarette, gazing out of the window of his Oregon beach home. He would have to sell it soon to keep the company in the black. Gosh darn you, Warble, he yelled in the night, but he knew he had no one but himself to blame. There are two ways to conquer country. One is by sword, the other is by debt. Oh man, tell me about it, debt. Mm. Hey, 500, only half a billion. Two and a half billion in terms of debt, you know, we'll work on it, we'll work on it, it's getting done, you know, Iberian economic, oh, crash, they were, they were beating on the floor, now, I said earlier that they were removing the, the market liberal path for the Iberia, for Iberia, but apparently they're just removing market liberals from the game, period, which is not cool, very not cool, Opus die, hmm, what a shame, just slightly over half a billion, hey, look, GDP growth, 7.4%, Helped out by doing poverty relief stuff, as well as other things, such as our focuses. Actually, we'll be done in 30, 13 days. Uh, we'll be over this one first. That's fine. What their laws forbid, we shall give. We lose stability, but we get some more consumer goods factories. Fortunately, America's leaders bowed down to the pressure of those lazy and complacent and put limitations on the greatest men's entrepreneurial spirit through laws and regulations. We will offer them a land where the SEC is far behind and there's no pesky lawyers and a crate of guns and a suitcase full of money or what make all the rules. The bravest Wall Street cowboys will become kings. What could they possibly want for more? I don't know. Never know. Trucks. Yeah, we want the artillery. We need to have at least high support. All right. So we finally got them helicopters. Hopefully we can use them. We should actually probably... We're still using 1950s guns improvements. Ugh. Whatever. We still gotta use them. Uh, let's see... Our land auction, how's that going? Well, hmm. Well, let's take a look here first. It is motorized. Armored, mobiles, and the infantry. Air assault, there it is. <clears throat> we need transport helis. Hmm. 
Well, this seems like to be the only one we can really change, so we're going to remove that. We got to start doing this stuff. Air Assault. We'll just make him 20 combat with to start off with. We got enough army XP, I'm not too worried about it. Now, the thing that's limiting us, I'm pretty sure, is this. There he goes. Yeah, we remove that. It would be better. Uh, yeah, this... Re oh, actually, support anti-tank would be bad. But that's what we can afford for now. Uh, I will put on more stuff, but we'll see what happens later on. So we need some transport helicopters, which is going to be a lot. I'm going to put you on high priority. Let's see. Planes, early technical bombers. So, actually... Just because I'm not... Usually this is set up for us. We have scout helicopters, which are nice. We're going to need some transport helicopters. So, here we go. Basic APCs. Uh, we don't really need that. Early helicopters. That's the transports. So I was making experimental, not early, which kind of sucks for it. We have enough of that for now. We'll actually make more of this later on. I'm going to put you at the bottom, though. So, there we go. Even below cast. So, there you go. Can we spare any more factories? Not really, no. <laughs> It'll be what it'll be. And as long as we use them in the last war against the last Russian unifier, that's okay with me. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'd love to do this stuff, but we got to get some improved scout helicopters. Helicopters? Helicopters. We might as well. We're still using guns from the 1950s, starting. Whatever. Starting fresh. A glass was raised to the table in San Francisco, silencing the indistinct voices speaking in Russian who looked up expectantly. I proposed to us the man holding the glass announced to America, to the liberation of Russia, and most of all to the ruination of the Germans. Glasses clinked together as cheers went up as the dinner party continued with renewed energy. Mikoski thought that his new life here might be not too bad. True, he still thought that the sooner Warble choked on his own spit and went to hell, the better off the world would be. Nevertheless, he found he was almost coming to enjoy his time in this great American city of San Francisco. It reminded him of how to bend almost and filled him with a nostalgia for those simpler days almost enough to drown out his bitterness over this forced exile. Almost. The rest of the emigrants were quite agreeable, and had helped them there to get settled in. And in the years since Werbel's thrice gosh darn takeover, he became something of a leader to them, hosting widely popular parties and celebrations for the community. Sadly, not many seemed very convinced of fascism, so whatever hopes he had once of retaking Magadan and giving Werbel his just reward for betrayal quickly evaporated. Still, this America was quite in a slant, and regard in which the emigrants still held him allowed him to still enjoy some semblance of the power he once had. So, he tried not to dwell on those crushed ups and past adventures. Perhaps Mikowski thought he should write a book, and perhaps the next generation or the generation after him might finally realize the fascist ideal. An old fascist finds happiness of sorts. I was going to go say, like, maybe he should help write Imperium with Mr. Yaki, but, you know, I guess Yaki's more of a national socialist than a fascist. Oh, look at this. Poverty relief? Don't mind if we do. Romania south to Germany, so be it. And then we'll do some worker training. No. Uh, yeah, that's expertise. Eh, that's bonus for industry. Actually, we might do that one because that's actually pretty good to do. Let's see about ten days left. And vertical envelopment, and we'll finish our air, our air doctrine, our land doctrine, with ground air task forces. Well, let's do this first. Keep spending money. Six ninety. Oh boy, that hurts. That really hurts. Air ground task force is very good. Oh, no, 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 no. There you go. That's better. A taste of American capitalism. Don't mind if we do. A society or a poverty rate will go down. Oh, boy. But the GDP growth will go up, which is good. Russia is the home of many ideologies and political systems. Communism, socialism, fascism, monarchism, autocracy, and even a misguided attempt at creating the kingdom of God on Earth. But every one of these firebrands of dreamers was crushed down by reality. We have implemented a system that was able to survive the harsh Siberian West. Pure capitalism. In the frontier of Russia, where all philosophies failed, the American dollar planted its flag just like it did across the strait. Oh, you betcha. Oh, yeah. Moderate support for, for America? Not bad. Ooh, 658. That hurts. That really does hurt. But keep building up the civilian, fac civilian factories. Oh, man. We're starting to run out of things to build around here. No, 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 no. Never, 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 never. Eventually, we want to build up all over the area, so it doesn't really matter to me where we build, as long as we build up a lot. I mean, yeah, it would be good to build where we we need more resources, or we get more resources, but whatever, you know. Can't wait to go to war again. Improve American relations, that'll be next. Such a sad day when I ran out of coffee, but whatever. How is our artillery looking? Minus 219. Oh, we need even more anti-tank now. Oh, hurts. More anti tank. There you go. Well, we'll do the best we can. 
Taste of American capitalism. Don't mind if we do. And then, so we've done this. We need to keep doing this. Poverty rate will begin to improve. Yeah, I'd like to do that, but I'm sure that'll help us out back in the game. Eh, that seems okay. Well, we could do this. We can improve our relations to global reach. Beyond the Far East. With America from love. We lose stability, which I don't like. Army professionals increases. Expanding our horizons. Well, let's do modernization, standardization. War has changed. It's no longer about warlords, naive ideologies, and bandits. Our next battles will be fought against seasoned fighters and organized divisions of face that our military should become a well-oiled machine. From a mixed bag of mercenaries, blackshirts, and adventurers, evolving into modern soldiers carrying modern weapons, using modern gear, with sophisticated training to enhance their abilities. Our men will assert logistical, psychological, and communications and battlefield control. <clears throat> Everything will be kept under, under our control. And he who controls the battlefields will control Russia. Out with the old... Dmitry walked the streets of Magadan with an extra kick in his step. He was skeptical when the mercenaries took over. Who wouldn't? Those men were mostly foreigners, united only by the cause of greed. His upbringing warned him of the foreign imperialists, but the Soviet Union was a distant memory now. The glowing neon sign that read Coca-Cola in American letters. It was certain that, that the acrylic uh, sign would come up any day now. It was what it promised. American imports had flooded Magadan, giving it life. New jobs were popping up everywhere to match demand. He had been prom promoted at the docks and now directed an entire team of dock workers to handle the cargo. That had been money in his pocket and food on the table aplenty. It was imaginable when compared to the rule of the fascists only years prior, it was time to celebrate. Vladimir, Dmitri called out in the dusty auto parts hall. Vladimir, you dude, I have vodka. Don't make me drink it alone. Let me pay you back all those times I slipped from your bottle, eh? Nothing answered his call. He realized the shop was quiet, not a soul present. It was then he noticed the boxes, most everything packed up and ready to go. Dmitri hurried to Vladimir's house, where he spoke to him on the doorstep. Americans, Vladimir said, with his eyes sunk into the floor. The place was crawling with the cars, you noticed. No one wants their old 20, year, uh, 20 years out-of-date Soviet-era crap anymore. They want real automobiles. I'm sorry, Dmitri, but I'm moving my family to a farm down south, where my sister lives with her husband's family. We'll go drinking when the work is done. <clears throat> It was the same story repeated a hundred times. If the Americans could make it, they made it cheaper and better. Dmitri realized that the only reason he had been replaced is because you still needed someone to bring all of this foreign stuff in. It made going to work in the morning a little harder each day. We all can't be winners. Well, we can all change our destinies if we choose to. Choose to. Hey, look at that. It's getting better. 600? Well, maybe it's getting worse. I don't know. All I know is that that GDP growth is now 8.4%. And that's not high enough. 15 more days. Not bad. And we'll have that done next. Cool. So, okay, so there's a lot of support for us to choose this stuff here. There's support for encouraged local recruitment. There's support for Haya Safari. There's support for Russian National Guard and American Ingenuity. I can't appease everyone. Let me just put that off the bat. I can't appease everyone. So, <clears throat> here's a good little compromise. We're going to go with Haya Safari, but then we're going to choose the Russian National Guard. So, we still use, like, locals, even though we won't be using this one. So, it is what it is. And then we will choose... We won't choose American Ingenuity... It is what it is. We'll still finish the ceasefire. Agreed. Cool. So this one's next. <clears throat> what good are large numbers of three brave men on a jeep can send a whole platoon of locals running through to their huts? The ease of which we cut through their forces since the days we arrived is proof enough they are not our kind of our people. They're not our kind of people. They are phony soldiers. We shall see through their lies. Well, we need a real warriors, and we know where to find them. In the wilderness of Africa, where men are turned from flesh and blood into steel, and our recruiters will make sure that they're ready to die for gold. Yankee and Jerry, Boer and Brit, on the same side and ready to join the bloody fray. Globe-trotting gladiators draw their swords and form their ranks for West Alaska. Some assembly required, though. Mitchell Livingston, the warble III, kept his face impassive, but internally burned with fury. He had not known how bad the situation was, and he was more than sure that one person had been lying to him all this time, and they would pay for that. He had inspected his army, or rather, as far as he was concerned, his army, barely being capable of being called such. The rabble that calls themselves soldiers possessed no discipline and little understanding of these basic field skills. The arms and other material they wore, or they utilized, were not only ancient and non-uniform, but also in terrible condition. Rule will not live so long or secured his and his confederates rule over the Far East by being sloppy and undisciplined, ill-equipped or blind, no. He secured it by taking charge, by putting in an honest day's toil of hard and quality of work, like any American would or should, and he was going to do the same here. Looking at each of the officers he now walked past in the eye, he wondered if they knew what was going to be in store for them. There was going to be a lot of hard, very hard work to bring the wider military into proper shape, and by God, they were going to do it. Training begins immediately. Look at that. Going up by six a month. Going up by another six a month. Going up by six and a half a month. Nice. Up here, the poverty is three and a half, which is okay. Up here, it's three and a half as well. Uh, research is going up by one, which is pretty bad. And academic base is only going by four. Well, it is what it is. It's what we got, you know. Moderate. Yeah. Oh, agriculture. I like that. Worker training is okay. I definitely want to get this one, though. Congolese Republic. No one cares right now. American guns. When can we do this one? And we need to control all Siberian states. Prepare for war. Uh, 16, 69. Wow. 
Well, maybe we can unify them. We, maybe we'll try to be peaceful, you know? Agricultural stuff. Actually, we're currently on mass mechanization. We do this, we get more popu monthly population, better consumer goods. So, I like that one a lot. There we go. And then we'll choose a Russian National Guard. So, we're still using some locals here as well. Listen, don't obsess over the books too much. Find the meanings behind the words and then decide. We can find our own plans and our own future instead of being delimited by Americans' military doctrine. We're now fighting in a strange land, leading with the most exotic military on the planet. We cannot expect that behaving like an American infantry division with Uncle Sam's industry full support and manned only by boys from the same neighborhood in Michigan will work here in Siberia. We need to develop a thought of our own, a Siberian way of war, techniques to fight where the, there is plenty of ground to cover and a lack of everything else. Magadan Free Radio, Broadcast 78. Radios across the Far East crackled alive where today's radio-free Magadan broadcast began. Those listening in were greeted by the now familiar voice of the host, Stephen, or Strelok, as he liked, or as he affectionately called by many mercenaries and civilians alike. Roast beef. Good evening, people of Siberia, he began ecstatically. You're listening to Magadan, or Radio Free Magadan, your best source of entertainment in these changing times. Speaking of which... Whispering could be heard just out of earshot of the microphone. Along with a telltale patter of footsteps as someone was ushered into the studio. As you know, things in Africa are changing as well. As the situation becomes more unstable, we're welcoming new and exotic mercenaries and friends from the faraway lands of the Congo. I have one such man here in the studio with me now. Say hello to our listeners, Mr. Kalstrat. Broken Russian with a strong Romanian accent could be heard over the static of the radio as the guests began to speak. Hello, I am called Fernando Calistrat. Very thankful to be welcome to your country and look forward to serving with your armies. Thank you. One for, wonderfully done, Fernando. Hmm, him. Among with other celebrity soldiers of fortune such as Swede Roy Larson have come with exciting stories and muscle to put behind our heroic efforts here in Russia. Now, here are some hits from that faraway land. News and guns from a distant land. Ooh, two generals, nice. 562, not bad, could be better, but... Oh, wow, we are building things exceptionally fast. Ah, uh, I love it. Build, build, Now, we'll keep two on. We can keep building some more in infrastructure. That's fine for now. But eventually, we want more, you know... Civilian factories, not military. Well, we do want some more military factories later on, because we don't have a lot. 16 days, 15 days. We'll get this one done first. <clears throat> Definitely improvise. Oh, we get a bunch for land auction. Whoops. Oh, well. Now, over here, we can keep doing this. It doesn't seem like it will give us that much... So I'm going to go ahead and do Contacts on the Hill. It's time to rekindle old friendships. Some of our comrades in the arms from our days in Burma and China, men who shed blood, sweat, and tears by our side, are now holding high places in Capitol Hill. We should probably turn uh, to the shared history and touch on this, of our eyes to further republic standing in the Washington. With the president on our side, we can count on a steady supply of goods coming from America to prop up our republic. Good, good, good idea. So we have waning American support. You know, it is what it is. Improve relations first. That's probably the most important thing to do. And then we'll probably go do work of training or something like that. Initiate propaganda experts. Oh, uh, yeah. I like that, but we actually probably don't, probably don't need that. Since we probably maxed out at 86% stability. Horizontal Industrial Organization 3. Yes, please. Even more max factories in the state. Yes, 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 yes. So we got to have two lines at all times working on this stuff. Two lines on civilian factories all the time. No matter what. Thank you. Keep the way it is. Looking pretty darn good. Next up. Let's see. 28 days. Not bad. Context in the hilt, over the table, as someone did mention, let us be honest. No one will believe that Langley doesn't have their fingers all over our rise to power. Former CIA agent taking over a slice of Russia? That's straight out of a work of fiction, or just one of Washington's boldest plans, but perhaps we were just that. Von Syatsky wouldn't be op able to operate freely across the Pacific, hire us, and buy that many guns without at least some friendly faces in the D.C. to keep the FBI off us back. Our enemies won't believe that for a second, so why should we try to hide it? We are Americans, and we're not ashamed of it. Our benefactors, another foggy Siberian night, another empty bar in the middle of nowhere. Agent Mason had grown used to meeting his contacts in unassuming places like this. No one would expect game-changing backroom deals were being brokered, and he could enjoy some much needed quiet before his guests arrived when the gr grinning man with his cadre of bodyguards entered the establishment. Agent Mason knew that the quiet was breaking over. The man, self-proclaimed president of West Alaska, chuckled as he approached. Mason, I just heard some good news from your buddies backside or backstage side. Looks like we can drop this whole charade now, huh? Mason hastily brought a finger to his mouth. Shh, hey, be quiet. You want the whole gosh darn city to know that we're here? Orville snickered as he took a seat across from Mason, clearly undeterred by the agent's warning. Hey, what's the problem here? Now that West Alaska has official recognition, that does not necessarily change our arrangement, Mitch. Mason interjected. Look, it's clear that the OFN is open to working more closely, but I would advise you going too fast and loose with this. You don't want the locals to think this whole operation is a colonization effort, would you? Orville paused for a moment. Perhaps Mason was correct and failing in falling in head first with the... OFM was perhaps not the wisest idea when his reputation with the natives was so tenuous. On the other hand, a full-scale collaboration was exactly what he was working towards all these years. You're right, we'll keep this hush-hush. 
So, alright, it's time to end the cloak and dagger. Nice. Over the table. Guns, trucks, and initiate programs. As much as I'd like, like I said, I want to do, but... It's not really worth it. And we get more war support, which I like, but we've got other things to focus on here. And I haven't done nothing for a government here. Really done nothing at all. Collaborators. Local politicians, yeah. Mercenary connections are where it's at. Actually, what do these guys offer us? Hemming. More division attack, which is nice. John Peters, which is okay. More daily political power. Or Drafalkes. More political power as well, but we lose consumer against factories. That seems okay. Gary Mogok. Uh, let's see, division, less division organization, better recovery rate, less stability. Roy Larson, more political power, but less recruitable population factor. Eh, kind of like what we have already, I'll be honest. And we're done with our land auction, which I should have probably waited to do, but whatever. Let's actually get some okay artillery. <laughs> oh man, that is so bad. Alright, so we're down here, worker training. Yeah, we get a bonus for industry. We could really use a bonus for industry, to be honest with you guys. Five days left, nothing there. Cool, over the table. From America, with love, a global reach. You know what? It's time to finish this side now. Representation through service. It's no secret that the average mercenary under the employment of the president has had a better life than the majority of the Russian locals. In addition to the better standards of living, political and voting rights, they have a steady source of employment, and that is sure to provide for them. The locals are of either flavor envy the Merc life. The Republic's laws are stiff, and there is not much room for social mobility. A discrepancy that will not have existed in America, where every man is free to be whatever he wants. Pattering his, govern his government on his home country's model, or what aims to fix this. He has a solution that will remedy the pers Republic's personal shortages, as well as reassuring the rest of the locals. Representation through service. Now, native Russians can sign up for a tour Werewolves army and be granted more rights as they complete their terms of employment. If they can shoot straight, why bar them from progressing their careers? Nice. We all make sacrifices and a shot at diplomacy. Handshakes, fake smiles, and whiskey shots are all three di things diplomats must be acquainted with in order to broker deals. The Star Spangled Banner could be seen waving atop a small ship entering Magadan's port, so a place so very far from home. Well suited men were standing on his bridge, furrowed brows in the faces as they looked to the con congregation of brawny men in battle worn uniforms standing on the harbor's edge, solemnly waiting for their arrival. As Americans landed, one of the burly figures stepped forward and quickly shook each other's, uh, each of the envoy's hands, nearly breaking their feeble wrists in the process of doing so. Welcome to Alaska, West Alaska, gentlemen, a place not so different than the good old U.S. of A. So you won't get homesick. Let us get to your quarters, shall we? We can talk more over a glass of whiskey and toast to the great budding friendship between our countries, eh? The diplomats at each other's, uh, at each other, visibly flabbergasted the mercenaries' bluntness and getting down to business approach. But then again, whiskey seemed alluring as a cold wind blew over the harbor. God, it's freezing out here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I want to live over here. But maybe that's just me. We have now less than half a billion annual deficit. Now, that is nice. And we're done building civilian factories? I don't think so. We're running out of places to build. You know what? Build all three first, and then you can continue doing infrastructure for now. Peace conference? Between whom? Oh! no! Oh, they actually invaded Norwe Norwegia? Norway, not Norwegia. Nine days left. Ten days, cool. Alrighty tidy. Let's see. Improved scout helicopters so we can I keep saying helicopters. Hmm. Well, maybe we should get some better trucks. Basic motorized equipment. That would probably be a, be a good idea. Because we're we're still using motorized, don't get me wrong, but we like it to be maybe a little harder, maybe a little more reliable. Production costs might go up a little bit more, but you know, whatever. And then we should do draw in the districts. Although the Republic may suspend democracy for the time being, it may not remain that way forever. Whether it's a Caesar or a Cincinnatus, Werbo must eventually turn to answering the question of other people. Where do they stand in the Republic? Is the Republic a matter of dict dictatorship where, they s where stated political rights are restricted indefinitely? These questions bubble in the thought of the Far Eastern Russians. We saw the unlikeliest of all candidates triumph or the fascists and communists. To answer their anxiety, the Republic will make some headway to accepting democracy as its form of government. It will enter a preparatory stage. We will draw distinct or districts, establishing voting booths, and devolve some governmental authorities to the mun municipalities and cities. We can complete the process but not for now. War stands on our gates and as the Central Siberians triumph over their own complex. Victory is greater than freedom. We all make sacrifices. Andre checks the clock on the recruitment office wall for about the 50th time in half an hour. When he decided to sign up for the army, he assumed that the line would be much shorter, but he arrived to a staggeringly long queue that was now near the end of. Really, he had no idea who in the right mind would choose to sign up for this paradox of an army, but he was here to standing in line. He had no other options anyway. His father had been getting sicker and sicker, and a worthless factory job wouldn't cover the medical bills ever since the old man had become back from the war in the West. He'd been getting sicker by the year. Andre had no idea what happened. Maybe it was a bullet in his side. Maybe it was a month spent in the mud. But he hadn't been able to pay a doctor to treat him, much less diagnose him. He'd just been about ready to call it quits when he heard about the new recruitment program. Not only were they promising rights when Forest Service concluded, but also extended to his family. Well, so he told his old boss at the munitions factory to shove and came here to stand in line and 
check a clock every five minutes. Finally, he was stirred from the slots by the man in front of him leaving the line. He was at the desk now where a broad-shouldered man in a uniform sat. Good morning, friend. I trust you're here to join up, he said. Yes, replied Andre. Resisting the urge sardonically, sardonically asked him why else he would be here. Just sign here, he nodded, sliding a paper in front of a soon-to-be recruit. Andre stared down at the blank space waiting for a signature. It'll all be worth it, he muttered, before sending away his rights and hopes of more of the future. We'll see. Yeah, don't ever sign the dotted line until you're ready. So we have high. We can't do this because, well, I guess we're already high technically. So artillery, do we still need more artillery? As much as I want to get that stuff, and we really do need that a bonus. Oh, that's not bad. I still want to do some more industry. Make sure we get our society better and better and better. Oh, poverty. I've got to do more poverty. I've just got to. Poverty, yeah. It just, ah. So this one should be getting done relatively soon-ish. Seven a month, that's not bad. Nascent industrial base, I mean, it's okay. We get some more cat retention gain, but it's not really super, super important. It's good and all, but whatever. Less than half a billion, not bad. That's slowly going up, but whatever. It depends for the UAE. So be it for the UAE. So be it, so be it, so be it. Next up, drawing the districts. So as much as I want to do the mercenary state, I think it's a legal path to collaboration is the way we've got to go. The Republic has loosened its standards regarding service, but the question still stands, what about collaboration? The truth is that the Republic cannot function as a state without the help of collaborators. From its bureaucracy to its police force, the Russians who, unlike, who willingly submitted themselves to the world's rule form the backbone and sinew of the newborn nation. Were it not for the help of these people, we would be nowhere. As a consequence, their status in society is a gray area. It's a, one way to solve this quandary is to legitimize their position. Allowing more Russians to enter the civil service as well as passing laws that confirm their legal status in society would go a long way towards soothing the restive ambitions of the Russian collaborators. The mercenaries will not like this, of course, but is the Republic not a state of, by, for the Russian people? Decrease mercenary influence, uh, just, mmm. That's the way we gotta do it. So do we need more artillery? I don't mind buying more artillery. Actually, no, we actually have a positive amount. We need more anti-tank of all things now. More anti-tank. Okay. Well, we don't have anti-tank. So be it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we gotta do fire and foreign instructors, too. I, we gotta get as much army professionalism as possible. And we can only get 1.23, which is actually not too bad. 24 days left. Well, we'll have that one done. And by dawn's early light, for the... Far to its east, a new sun is dawning upon the desolate Russian landscape. So long dominated by the authoritarian ideologies of communism and fascism, the lands where the light shall touch shall know the rule by fair and gentle hand, whose force is firm but whose grip is steady in the troubled times. The U.S. of Russia, with its sister republic across the Bering Strait, has risen to its duty of salvation of the Russian people. Soon democracy shall make its way to the people who have not known rule by popular will, and for that we have one man to thank, Mitchell Werbel III. In his presidential palace in Magadan, where he rules by the will of the peoples of the Far East, he drinks a glass of wine cheerfully. To the west lay central Siberia, a strong farther, farther foe, far, stronger foe than any of the state lets the idea face in its pr progress to power. However, he fears not. Come superior force, the motto of the Republic shall echo throughout time. L libertas vos libertat. Fear and loathing alike. Earlier this month, noted author and founder of, of Gonzo Journalism, Hunter S. Thompson, released his book, Fear and Loathing L.A., set in a surreal alternate history with the universe with few rules. Uh, the work is a multi-prolonged satire and other more serious alternative history works, as well as a scathing critique of the culture of the U.S. in the 70s. Thompson spends dozens of pages going into the minutia of each divergence point of off-color vignettes within the overarching story that detail how the world of this novel ends up being different from our own. Irrelevant and nonsensical, these stories detail ridiculous episodes such as the Japanese doctor in Unit 371, accidentally trying a hallucinogenic drug of his own concoction, leading him to pair drop an army of drugged-up ghouls into the downtown Tokyo. While critics are somewhat split on these stories, casual readers tired of the oversaturation of the fiction market with cheap, overly serious alt-history novels have found them a welcome if odd diversion from the norm. Linking these various episodes together, Thompson strung out a vague semblance of a plot in this alternative L.A., mainly consisting of cheap allegories to attack contemporary American political culture. In one memorable scene, a street gang closely modeled after the Yaquiites beat up with demonstration of old yuppie bigots. Nixon supporters also referred to as bloodthirsty freaks, all while an inebriated Thompson watches with juvenile glee. While critics and readers alike are split on the novel, most are at least conceived that it is a scathing and effective critique of the current literacy, or literary, literary and political climate. Different, I guess. Doing what's best, civilian budget boost. Nice, 146 is not bad, doing what's best. And Tolly Sol Solbchuk sat at his desk, anxiously pushing his pencils back into a single orderly line. His office was the same, the town was the same, but the flags had changed. No longer did Antoli swear allegiance to the Tsar and faithfully discharge his duties as mayor in his name. Antoli's duties were the same, but now I performed them for the up-jumped American mercenary. The green and white flag of the principality had been removed from the office, replaced by the West Alaskan colors. Anatoly could have laughed, West Alaska, what a ridiculous notion. He could have laughed, but he didn't. 
The mayor had re hadn't retained his position for so long by snickering who I never soldiers sauntered into his town. No, he kept his mouth shut and his head down. So Anatoly sat in his office, arranging his pencils and hoping that he could continue to protect the Americans or the people in his care. True, there had been some angry complaints. Diehard whites threatened to kill him for not fighting to the death against Warble's mercenaries. But what could he do? Dead, Anatoly could do nothing. But as a collaborator, as mayor, he could continue to do what was best for his people. Anatoly sighed, leaning back in his chair. He wondered if the townsfolk would forgive him one day. He uh, sl snow fell quietly onto the rooftops, and Anatoly slipped into the comfortable silence of the condemned. One day they'll understand. In a war, there are no winners or losers, only victims. Wow. Mm. Cool. There's like eight people here trying to fight for the soul of Iberia. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Seriously, good luck. You're going to need it. They're going to need it. I'm not getting involved down there. Oh, look at that. Good. Army prof professionalism. Uh, it's just something we've got to do. God, we need more political power. And then we'll finish this episode doing another focus, like back in the game. We could. I want to do it from America with love. Like our sister republic, the U.S. of A., like any loving sibling, they send us resources necessary to spread freedom across the Bering Strait. Every other ship that arrives in Magadan is stamped with the stars and stripes that we so adore. This crucial aid helps keep our fledgling republic afloat, and we see no reason to protest the dominance of American trade in our economy. The local Russian civilians aren't too pleased about the situation, however, as they make ridiculous claims such as Russian businesses are dying or we will not be colonized. Clearly, they just aren't used to the American style of freedom yet. Welcome around time, being under the pay of the world's greatest superpower is the best deal we could ask for. Absolutely. Ooh, more political power, don't mind if we do. Uh, we can increase this by a little bit more. We're kind of okay. I want to keep it doing this first, though. And which education is not bad. Scientific research. Um, hmm. More stability. Um, hmm. Academic base research. Kind of like the academic base. So, a true inner palace. Back in the West, uh, possibly far from Magadan, lay the historic city settled by Peter the Great. The subject of Wellerbull's interest, however, was a landmark created by his niece, Anna. She created the Versailles of Russia, the Winter Palace. It had been the seat of Kerensky's government for a time, but its place in history was cemented by the Bolshevik storming it in 1917, not to mention the scarring memory of its destruction, filmed for all to see in the widely distributed films from the German invasion. The Goebbels sure did know how to film the obliteration of history. Never mind that, Orbel thought. The construction of his presidential palace built as closely as possible to the Winter Palace, which was once the St. Petersburg, was complete, and now lay in the Siberia with a proper land of ice and snow. The only fitting place for a Orbel Palace, no? He was celebrating the occasion with some French wine brought all the way here from the Atlantic. With over a dozen bottles had been distributed to his men who had partaken in the celebration of the palace's completion with him. In spirit, though, Orbel wanted to spend night tonight by himself. He thought of its contender to the West who could enjoy the full bounty of the Siberian plan. As he stepped from his glass and looked around, a smile creased on his face. He had united a band of lost and forsaken to his cause. He had made a new nation, not Russian, but one of his own design. He was a master of war, and his beloved soldiers would march towards and forward and crush whoever was in his path. Would Caesar hesitate? Would Napoleon? Actually, to heck with all those losers. They were conquerors. He was a builder. He was going to be a Washington. That is how history would remember him. He would accept no excuse from this. 99% of failures come from the people who make excuses. But I hope you enjoyed today's episode, guys. If you did, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll finish this part of the Focus Street and probably go to war, or maybe even peacefully unify with Tomsk. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.